thanks for doing this. Thanks so much for for uh, being a part of a part of this experiment. Never really done anything like this before. Um, yeah, it's my pleasure. Um, yeah. yeah, I uh, I don't often do stuff like this, but it's um, it's fun to mix it up in lockdown. You know? Yeah, so, exactly. Um, I think that was that I was the idea. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so here we are um, in conversation about technology uh, with Su Guancheng. She is an artist and researcher who's been exploring new and exciting ways for humans and machines to collaborate. Um, she's had work exhibited all kinds of places and events such as uh, Art Basel in Miami, National Arts Art Center in Tokyo, the New Museum in New York, and uh, Art Science Museum in Singapore. Um, so I guess I'll, well, let's just first start talking about how we know each other. And it's actually a little bit difficult for me to pinpoint maybe when we met because yeah. I feel like we were in similar friend groups very, very, very early on, like maybe 2000. Yeah. Like, I know for sure that, like, we went to a wedding together. <laughs> like, we were at the same wedding. We were at, at uh, my friend Matt uh, from a band, Body Language. We were oh, at that wedding, wedding together. And they yeah. have a baby now, so that's how long, that's how long it's been. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> but it's, it's hard to know exactly when maybe we met, probably, like, at, at some party or something like that. Um, yeah, I think um, I remember, because I was in... Um, sort of the music scene in New York around like 2008, nine mm -hmm. and beyond, you know, um, doing stuff with a uh, percussion lab and they were tight with body language. And I actually, I was, um, I knew everyone in body language except for you. Right. Yeah. I knew Matt and uh, Grant and, uh, Ange. Uh, and Ange. Yeah. Yeah. And like, yeah. like, hang on, they'd, like, we'd go to each other's events, but I didn't ever know you, but turns out like, uh, your cousin is like a child. So like all this like weird serendipitous stuff uh, that. <laughs> it's okay. Are you okay. Oh. oh, sorry, that was the. Sorry, my, apparently my dog uh, wants to be in this room. Oh. Okay. okay. <laughs> sorry about that. Um, but yeah, yeah, because we, I think. That makes sense now, because you were doing, you were part of the music scene, and you were doing a lot of, like, artwork and stuff for that community um, around that time. Um, but yeah, it turns out that my cousin, Vita, and you grew up in Toronto together or something like that? That's Yeah, just... yeah we were super tight in Toronto. Yeah. Um, when we were, <laughs> we're, like, childhood uh, friends, um, like, all that stuff that I won't, I won't talk about and embarrass yeah, sure. the both of us with but yeah and then she she mentioned when we got together once that we knew each other and i went to one of your gigs in brooklyn and like sort of became more introduced like you and me after all the body language stuff like mm -hmm. years ago, so. yeah and, and that then, was like that was pretty recently too i feel like that was like maybe two years ago max or something like that yeah. so like that was when i discovered that the two of you were also childhood friends and i was like well no way because i'd been sort of following your work like like through 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 the years and um and, you know yeah. we met at that wedding and like kind of just in the ether but um it's cool to those random like small world connections yeah <laughs> yeah no I mean I feel like across a lot of different sectors because now we re met again um at the I O show that's right uh, yeah and it's not often that anyone from like my previous music kind of circles. I encounter and what I'm doing now. So it was a, it felt, it felt like a friend and fam thing. In more ways That's than awesome. One. That's cool. Um, yeah. Wow. So, uh, first let's just start off talking about like, um, you know, we won't talk about your childhood, childhood, but like sort of what your path was like kind of, um, deciding to become a professional artist. Yeah, that's, uh, that's an interesting question. I think, um, like in regards to professional artists, I don't, it's, I, I sort of still don't really feel like a professional artist. When I think of like professional artists, I think of like, like, I don't know, just, I think maybe more like career, like art path, you know? Right, um, right, right, right. But I think um, I uh, decided to spend a lot more time doing this work um, and sort of like shifted my whole life many years back, probably like 10 years back 
or maybe a little less. I don't know, time's a bit weird for me right now. But um, I feel like what I'm doing is I'm doing a lot of this um, with all I've got now, like pretty, pretty full on, full time. Mm -hmm. um, and that sort of happened, uh, yeah, I'd say like eight, ten-ish years ago, I was um, doing, like I think a lot of people in New York, um, like, doing freelance and I had like a full-time job because I'm like Canadian and, and you know to be in the country there's a lot of different hoops at that yeah, point I'm, to... I'm Canadian as well so I I relate um yeah, yeah. I'm on the I'm on the 01 um yeah. one visa, yeah. so that's a whole that's a whole thing that we could have a whole other podcast conversation about probably yeah. <laughs> the totally. amount of money and time I've spent just to exist here is insane um but, yeah. completely right so it's like different if you're from another place like before mm -hmm. like and we have like our practices now in art and music but like before that to even be in the united states you needed a sponsor and all that stuff so anyway <laughs> um yeah i i remember there's like this point where i like decided i could get like another full-time job like my whole department had been laid off and i like could do that more or I was sort of just at this point where I started to do more installation work and uh, I remember like getting some offers but then like emailing people like after and like really like I don't know um, not self-importantly but I kind of laugh at this now um, I emailed all of them and was like I think I'm gonna do art full-time now <laughs> and like looking back and like they didn't care <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I think I've made some moves uh, many years ago to try to, um, yeah, just see what would happen and take that risk. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it's a big are. leap to make. Yeah. And it's, uh, I feel like, you know, maybe when you're writing those emails, like who knows if other people cared, but I feel like just like saying that for yourself was probably like, yeah, I, I feel like I can relate to that as well. Just kind of being like, oh, like this is this is what I do and yeah yeah I'm, definitely I'm my own boss <laughs> and, uh, when, when was that for you well for me it was it was kind of I went to college in the states so it was a little bit like yeah, um, I started sort of like playing gigs uh, and I went to school in New York so I was just like playing gigs in New York and kind of just getting into that world that's when I like started playing for body language mm -hmm. and started touring and stuff between between like fig finishing school and also just like trying to figure out what it would be like to be a musician getting paid under the table like doing lessons and stuff like that and then graduating you know there was the whole like how do I stay here question yeah. and there was like two routes one was either to like figure out some other job but I like had no like skill like I, I just like <laughs> me as like someone in like the job market like just didn't seem like something that I even could imagine like it was so hard to like all my musician friends, you know, were like bartending or like a, yeah. being a barista or something like that. And like, I couldn't really like get a job like that because yeah, um, you're, it's just not an option when like, you know, w like a, some random bar is not going to like fill out all this paperwork and like spend all this time to like vouch for me to like stay in the country. So uh, yeah, I had yeah, to, yeah. I had to kind of figure out um, some way to make it work. And that's when I, you know, there's like the one year that you get after school to kind of figure your shit out. And then I applied straight for an O one. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I did the O one. Uh, I think I'm on my third one now and it's about to expire. It's just like a constant thing. But yeah, yeah I just, I kind of just made that leap. I think it was, it was pretty like, maybe for me, it was a little bit less like set, like, oh, this is like where I'm cutting off. But it was also like, because um, in school I was like doing similar types of work already by the time I graduated I kind of continued it and just like ramped it up yeah. and then it kind of turned into a thing where I was just touring all the time and yeah. that was basically up until COVID hit <laughs> and, um, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. We, we gotta talk about that right? yeah yeah but yeah. yeah that was that was that was kind of it for me and I, I feel lucky that like I've been able to make it work um it's not easy so yeah yeah it's it's not easy I think especially like with the visa stuff in mind mm -hmm. like the i feel like it's just a bigger risk and uh yeah i i really i really relate to that i i i kind of yeah you you wonder how long you can keep the lights on all the time i guess so, yeah. at least maybe sometimes <laughs> yeah totally totally uh, and just not knowing what's happening next month and whatnot that's like yeah. always always the case um i hear that yeah, yeah. so in sort of 
taking this leap was that sort of around the time did you uh because i know you went to mit and you were like researching there um was that sort of like what what were some of the things that inspired you early on like at this stage to engage um with technology in your art making Um, was that something that you were kind of always inspired by um you know yeah i mean i think i um you know, my, my parents, um, so I was like brought up um, as a musician and a programmer. Um, my mother is a computer program, my father's an opera singer. Mm. And I think um, in addition to that, I was just a really massive like computer person. Like, I don't wanna say nerd, cause I was like, oh, I'm a nerd. Like, but you know, I, I, was, a, I was very, I lived very much in like internet culture and mm-hmm. I felt like that was really central to you know, my development. So I feel like they were really one and the same, like thinking about analog and digital wasn't that distinctive. Like it wasn't like I felt, I never felt like I was trained in any particularly traditional way that was apart from like just being an internet kid, you know? Mm. Um, So I think the, uh, but my, I mean, I think everything that I've done is really, a very natural development from that, like, you know, seeing how technology has changed over the course of my life, like, you know, from, you know, the like bulletin board systems of old, I'm totally going to date myself, but like, you know, from like pre, pre, like MySpace, mm-hmm. like GeoCities times to, <laughs> Geo-Cities. you know, what I mean? like QAnon, you've got to like, there's there's a thread there and i think it's a really fascinating and like defining one for our generation so mm-hmm. and, and you know the next one so i think a lot of my practice deals with what the relationship with technology is whether that's like with a robotic unit or ai um or like just different like software tools and i'm mm-hmm. just leaning heavily more in more into that just because it, it just makes sense. It's like one line of curiosity um, mm. that expands and branches. So That's cool. I don't think there was a really particular moment for me, but I do think uh, when I was at the Media Lab, I thought a lot more about like embodied machines and what, like how like so much of my understanding of technology was um, based on like this re- rectangle, <laughs> rectangular screen and all like the layers and that. But I, I was curious about what could happen um, and what I could learn by bringing it back into physical space and sort of having that like feedback loop. So mm. that was uh, just a big curiosity of mine um, in like 2014. Mm. <laughs> and, uh, and it sort of kept my interest ever since. That's awesome. Yeah, I think there was like, I feel like there's something, and I, I'll, I'll say that I wasn't like, I think my introdu- introduction to the internet was very much like, MySpace and I remember and like email and like MSN Messenger and AIM and stuff like that. So I think like from what I've observed of like my friends who were into stuff like pre that, like before there were sort of more of these like corporate structures like starting to like kind of um, okay. kind of dictate the way in which people uh, sort of interacted online. I, I feel like there's there's something about every one of my friends who's like who was like kind of like deep into the internet before that that like there was something about that era where it was like it felt more like DIY and like more niche and like it's kind of like manifested itself in how they their relationship with the internet is like uh, beyond that and I think that's that's really interesting and cool um but I missed out on that I was like very much like (laughs) when I first started it was like just like chatting and stuff like that like with through through MSN and things like that yeah that's a great thing too I think like there's that magic of like like chat or like mm-hmm. aim at the time or you know just talking to us that was uh that seems like we take for granted now right but um but yeah i love that that felt a lot like possibility space to me and i kind of in, in regards to sort of how that's turned like in 2020 i feel like a bit of sense of responsibility for like how not, not like personal responsibility but you know like you can see how it could have gone another way and how it was a different way before. Mm-hmm. And I think I'm just trying to um, explore that kind of stuff in my work and not get too bogged down by, you know, uh, stuff. <laughs> yeah. 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 
too much to get into. Yeah, yeah. totally, totally. Well, that's a good segue into um, sort of talking about the work that you've sort of been doing from 2014 to now. Um, And I've, uh, so... You know, like you mentioned earlier, we kind of reconnected again at Google I.O. Uh, yeah. Was that last year or two years ago? I don't remember <laughs> when things happened at all. But um, we basically were both on the same bill for uh, Google I.O., which is still a little unclear as to what that event was. <laughs> but um, it was it was interesting. It was really cool. Um, it was really especially cool to see you perform in, um, and we were also uh, collaborating with Monom, which uh, is a spatial sound system uh, company based out of Berlin. And that was like extra kind of exciting for me. Uh, but yeah, um, I don't know. I was, I was just really struck by your performance. Um, I thought it was definitely unlike anything I'd seen before. Um, and it was really inspiring. So before I like talk too much about it, uh, why don't you just give a little background on the on the project and how you first started developing like the AI technology for it? And uh, sure, yeah. yeah, no, I I was really delighted about that show. It was definitely a strange, um, but like in in a way where like the highlight was getting to uh, like hang out and like see your performance and like with the modern folk in Berlin with the spatial sound system was a really I've always been in spatial sound. Um, and it was the first time me and my collaborator Aquarian um, was sort of we're sort of like experimenting with this new process where um, I was drawing um, and performing with my two robotic units um, but also we had these uh, contact mics attached to the canvas so what was interesting about using the spatial sound um, um, sort of system was that we were spatializing the drawing gestures of myself and the robotic units. And that was just, just a really new, um, like real time responsive um, thing. And like Chris was putting a lot of different, Chris Aquarium was putting a lot of different filters on it. It was just like created this ambiance that uh, was uh, just incredibly special and unique. And I, I would, Looking forward to hopefully at some point doing that again. But the but the performances um, I've been doing almost like accidentally. Uh, like I think of myself as an accidental performer. I started out as an installation artist and like um, at doing like large scale drawing um, projection map installations with like interactive stuff. Um, but then I always sort of wanted to put myself in the frame in those installations. So I would like finish a drawing. Because I just felt like it, like having a, someone there creating in the moment uh, gave it just a sense of life, and 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 then that uh, turned into like this exploration of human and machine, and sort of what um, what it would look like to co-create with a mechanical, like non-human, like unit. Um, and at the time when I was sort of developing it, I was like the. I was the only person around <laughs> like who could actually iterate with it and like I with the Doug drawing operations unit generation one Doug one so it's really accidental in that it was mostly just a curiosity that I had uh in 2014 and then when it came down to show it they're like well how do you want to show it I'm like I don't know this we didn't really think about it and then and then I was like well I could just sit there and do it like, yeah, we'll do that. so then I remember the first time I did that particular piece, it wasn't with the sound, like it's, it's developed into a much larger show, but mm-hmm. I was literally sitting on this like black box that they made for me. <laughs> uh, at, um, it was incubated by uh, New Inc, which is an incubator, incubator project coming out of the New Museum. Mm. So I'm like sitting on this black box with this like robotic arm that like more or less sort of works, but it's like kind of, generation one and they didn't really know what to do with it and they weren't like no one's supposed to enter into the performance space which is me on this black box and this total black backdrop so they put like red curtain like red not curtain but red um like hanging rope yeah, what do you call those things so uh and i was like behind it so it felt like this really weird like uh 
accidental thing. Mm -hmm. But since then, I was really engaged with it. We ended up taking the rope away, and people would come and like watch the interaction. And it was just a really humanizing, I think, moment in um, engaging with like new media performance. And it was like super reduced. Like the installation next to me in the uh, at New Museum was like this like projection map, like cotton candy theremin and oh. like, like pink, like sound, like it's just, it's a beautiful piece. And then I'm sitting in the dark yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> on the table with like a single light on me. So it was just, you know, it, I think it was a very experimental risk uh, at the time. But since then um, I started doing more of those and developing the whole like, you know, the whole practice around that engagement. And I think mm. I've really, grown a lot through it. IO being um, uh, a situation where I'm actually drawing with generations one and two mm -hmm. of the robotic units. Generation one, which is linked more to mimicry and like um, gesture sensing and uh, generation two, which is a robotic arm uh, trained on a neural net of my own drawings. Mm -hmm. So actually made a model based on drawings that I've made over the past like two decades. Um, to as a collaborator, so it's like it's been really interesting to see like the drawings from it and actually work with it um, because it's yeah it's just it's a different type of performance um, and when like performers performers I respect as much as I respect your sort of body of work say that they like it I get pretty jazzed because it's oh, very it's super super cool um, and I'm really glad that you. Uh, decided to scratch that itch in 2014 and that it's been a continued source of inspiration uh, and sort of path of exploration. Um, yeah, it's, with, it's, yeah. Um, been, it's been, it's been a thing, a whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so with uh, Generation 2, you know, you were saying that you trained it on a neural network of your own drawings. Obviously, that was, you had to like gather like a lot of your old work and kind of like feed it that information like what is it like sort of seeing generation that generation sort of work and seeing yourself in that work like do you feel did, did it feel like you were like oh that's something I totally would have done or did it feel I don't know like I, I wonder like how much of yourself did you see in it like once it was actually trained or was it like maybe more of its own thing you know it's hard to say I think I, at the beginning, it felt more like, a, you know, a part of what I was interested in was, um, you know, this this possibility of like non-human creativity or like of the beauty of a non-human move, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and I think in the beginning, it felt a lot more uh, sort of foreign and maybe synthetic. Um, but uh, now that I've been working with it more, I feel like my drawing style is like, adapting to the collaboration, which is sort of what the work is intended to do. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I think whenever things feel too staid or too familiar, I like sort of pushing it into the unknown of it, which is like, I think it, at this point, it does really feel, feel familiar. Um, mm -hmm. But I wouldn't necessarily say that like, it's a replication, like there, yeah. there's a reason but it's not like um, equivalence, right? Yeah, so, for sure. uh, so yeah, it's it, there's a lot of, I think what's been really interesting for me about the project is not only like designing the, the drawing style and like thinking about what that kind of translation means, but mm -hmm. sort of how other people respond to these ideas is like, some people get really uncomfortable by the fact that like a robotic unit or like an, an AI yeah. system could replicate X, but I tend to get really encouraged by by it in in my art practice because it's like it just shows me a new like way to move and like represents a creative catalyst that I wouldn't otherwise have done on my own. So. Totally, yeah, yeah, and I think you know what uh, one thing that's really exciting about your performances is, or you know, the one that I saw and I've also seen other videos and stuff is that like. Um, you know, people tend to use technology or think of technology as sort of a standard of perfection and sort of a standard of control that doesn't really leave much room for 
um, risk or kind of spontaneity or anything like that. Yeah. Um, so mm -hmm. to kind of, and this is something that I think about a lot with my music and how I relate to electronic music in general, which is a very much like steeped in a history of um, kind of automation, you know, and kind of uh, having everything perfectly on the grid and stuff like that. So to see you use technology in this way where you're um, performing in front of a live audience and there's all this like up in the airness to it and it's also you know celebrating sort of human gesture but in a completely different way with a machine sort of that's been fed human gestures and like I don't know it's it's, it's a cool thing there, there was a there's a quote I think it's my friend Rafiq Bhatia told it to me but I believe he got it from uh, the great improviser um Wadada Leo Smith which is that like people don't go see the lion tamer um for I mean people go see a lion tamer because there's the possibility that he could be he or she could be eaten you know <laughs> and yeah. I think that uh, for a live performance that's something that's like really powerful and to sort of harness technology in that way um, was really cool to to see yeah um, yeah potential for disaster always makes something more exciting <laughs> <laughs> yeah the, the the shit we put ourselves to right <laughs> yeah. oh man like, uh, you know, and I think, you know, coming from a more music background, I think I, um, you know, definitely have an influence that, that was an influence on me because I would see, you know, these performers like, like you and like our friends just really like throw so much of themselves into the work and like it felt so live, it felt so alive. And when I was getting more into like the space that I was in before this, I was like, man, I don't have that feeling. I don't have that sense of communication with the audience. I don't have that sense of risk uh, at that point. And now I definitely do. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not sure that's a good thing for my sanity, but it feels, <laughs> feels more like what I wanted. To, you yeah. know? And I'm sure that first time you were like sitting on that black box, like it was like terrifying, but maybe now it's like something that you've become a lot more comfortable with in that space. Um, you know, I, I did my last performance in Mexico City, um, where I had a heart rate monitor strapped to my chest, and I was working with a new robotic unit and like a whole new show. I did this, um, yeah, it was it was kind of crazy. Um, yeah, just like thinking about sound a little bit more, and, and and had the heart rate monitor attached to the visuals, and it was like pulsing. And I think I'm always trying to find myself that find ways to put myself at risk in the performances. So like, I, I, I sort of look forward to the day when I, I stop doing this to myself and get to relax a little bit more. <laughs> um, I mean, I, that's actually um, uh, like something that's pretty topical. Like I've had to move my uh, performances to the virtual, you know, a lot. Yeah. I do these like live performances streamed into a different, like uh, this, museum in uh, Norway hmm. like, there's a sense of liveness there but it's really different I kind of uh, I joke about uh, you know the stress of it but I actually really miss it so how are you how are you doing over the past little while it's a good question um, yeah I've kind of come to accept that like uh, you know virtual performances they do approximate sort of the experience um, I think on both <laughs> ends but it's nowhere near the same really um yeah. and uh you know because I, I don't know the way i think of like live performance at least for me like it's really sort of like a, an active exercise in empathy in a way you know because you're kind of like in a room with people and especially also when you're playing music with other people um and i guess in your case it's like with ai but also with like collaborators you know like aquarian um but you know, you're kind of, um, you know, something as simple as just like locking into a groove with someone, you're just like seeing where they're at and you're like finding yeah. common ground. And then that translates to a sound that's like kind of um, in the ears of all the people in the audience and it becomes this collective experience. So that that's kind of how I think of it. And obviously like virtually that does work to some extent, but I think there's just, A, there's like the technology for live streaming, um, especially when it's not pre-recorded is still pretty rough, I think. Um, and so there's like a, 
fidelity thing. Um, and there's an associated kind of thing with like anything that feels too high production of like, oh, well, that's not live. You know what I mean? Like, it's like kind of like this, this weird space to be in, but just like not being in the same room, there's something about it that's different. And I think that um, more and more I'm, I'm trying to think of maybe, and I don't have any answers, but maybe different ways to engage with people and to engage with community um, virtually than, than trying to replicate something that um, isn't completely sort of replicatable in a way uh, because yeah. I think, you know, we're forced into a scenario where, like, um, I don't know, just it, we're just, like, in a new world and, like, trying to do, like, the old thing in the new world, like, doesn't, like, totally work uh, for me. Um, and I did, you know, I released an album in April <laughs> and uh, I had, like, yeah. developed this whole show, like, I did a residency at Mass Mocha for it and, like, and suddenly um, I was like, shit, shoot, like, I don't, like, there's no way for me to, like, kind of do this in front of people like I intended. So I did a, a bunch of live streams and it was cool. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, it was also challenging in a lot of ways, you know, it's funny, yeah. like finishing, like performing, sweating, and you're just like, oh, I'm still alone in a room. <laughs> yeah. I think that's been, that's been a hard transition to like a lot of the, like the flow of doing live, like whether it's like, I think, you know, in, just engaging with the space and like, whether that's like your fellow performers or like the audience, but even like the technicians, like, you know, you all go and you like celebrate after, or like there's this, yeah, I don't know. A lot of that, the ad adrenaline doesn't necessarily have a place to go in the same way when you're, right. when yeah. you're yeah. there's actually a book of called, I mean, it's, it's more on like the, the performance theory side. So it's not like, but it's, it, I found it really interesting. Weirdly enough, I was reading it way before COVID and then like now it just sort of brings in my ears of it. It's called um, uh, Archaeologies of Presence. And it's sort of like, um, I'll, I'll send you guys the link so you can post it or whatnot, awesome. but it, yeah. it's cool because it, it sort of, um, for me, it, it examines different approaches to what like, what it presence means and like what makes it, or like in more like performers parlance is like, what is it to be live? Mm -hmm. Like, and like what, like how do you create space in an art practice or like what does, like what does that, it require from the viewer and like the performer and it's and it's been it's been cool and it's about like ways to mutate and ways to evolve that that I feel like are really like uh in in line with what performers are gonna have to do now yeah um, I'd love to that sounds super up my alley so definitely yeah, send that along cool. yeah awesome yeah. yeah so what um you said you've done a couple live streams like since COVID started what is that sort of um experience been like for you like um it's um well i haven't done live streams to like the the internet um mm -hmm. like, a public live stream like that but i've done live streams to um like specific galleries at different times um like i was supposed to do an installation in uh soar uh, um, skmu in norway um and i was supposed to have these series of performances over the past few months but we had to move them virtually and they were great. They were, um, you know, game to try a new format with me. So I sort of pre um, sent over the feed of my performance um, from London where I was staying at the time mm. uh, and from the studio space in London where I'm like just performing with that. So um, it was it was different. I think I've, uh, I was performing on a platform um, and painting on this platform, but I was surrounded by uh, green screen, so I was able to do some real-time um, visualizations based on my EEG, uh, Moz painting that creates this environment. So it's like a really new process. Uh, I think in the beginning, I was really interested in keeping everything like, like you were saying, like more close to what the live would be, mm -hmm. um, or what the live performance would be. So it's still like obeying the laws of physics. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And all that and then you know I was just putting the green screen like you would a projected backdrop um, and we did I did uh, five performances I had my sixth one in a week but since then I've slowly tried to like break apart like what like the the physics and the like the the frame really is you know and like and that's really interesting and like ways to distort the image to communicate the performance in ways that 
I wouldn't normally obviously be able to in person. Um, it's raised a lot of questions actually, because mm. it's really different to have, especially in like the work that I've been doing where um, I think in performance, like we've all seen film, seen filmed performances of like bands. Mm -hmm. So you sort of there's like a, there's like different approaches that, you know, make sense. There's and like, yeah. yeah, exactly. There's like a style, there's like, a, but for what I do, there's not like a, I, I don't, if there is, I don't know of it. Like there isn't really like a, a, a sort of script for how the shots are laid out. So I'm sort of directing myself in a way because mm -hmm. i'm yeah. it, there's, it's not like i do a song you know yeah. like there's yeah. no song. <laughs> and so so yeah i'm like it's, i've been getting more into like film theory and like like the gaze of the camera and like mm. what different things might mean and like how that can evolve the work a bit because yeah it's 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 a new terrain I mean, it's, it feels like a really different medium and like to your point like i feel like we have to look at it like a new medium that we're exploring as mm -hmm. opposed to like performance virtual, you know? Right, like, yeah, totally. No, that's so yeah. cool that you got to kind of do it over the course of multiple performances and like yeah. that you were able to kind of, you know, ex explore, you know, start in a place that felt more familiar and then kind of like stretch out and, and, and experiment. Um, I'd be really curious yeah. to see that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to post uh, documentation of that. There's still like a billion things I want to try, especially mm -hmm. with like contact mics and sound. Um, but I think that's the nice thing about being in this space and sort of defining it. It's that like I can kind of do whatever I want. Yeah, totally. <laughs> so, so uh, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, but it's sort of part of the fun, I guess. So. Totally, yeah. And are you uh, are you working alone mostly? Or are you still able to collaborate, you know, with uh, with different people? Uh, I'm I have been working a lot on my own over the past little while, um, just because it's been like a mad scramble to get everything together. But mm -hmm. I have a new I'm working on Aquarian's new album, mm -hmm. um, it's coming out in February, and awesome. uh, and we're working on a new installation project um, that we're really excited about, potentially with spatial sound as well. So, so yeah, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm looking to uh, expand, I think for the next little while, um, now that like I'm exploring virtual performances, I also want to think about ways of uh, exploring collective collaboration. Like if we're all going to be sort of cooped up in our homes, you know, and like, and we're sort of, performing, but I feel like, you know, the line between audience and viewer is really blurred. Mm. Um, I think it's like, how can we make something together? Totally Cause I don't yeah. like, I don't need the frame to be like centered on me. I think it's more about like what's possible. Mm. What's like, how do we create like that sense of present presence without physical proximity. Right. Um, totally. it's something I think, I think apart from like it being an interesting, like, concept to explore for you know my practice i just think that'll be good for you know us all like myself even emotionally because it's not easy to you know to go from you know performing in front of people to having like you know a studio practice that's very much solitary so totally i think it, I, it, I it to checks a lot sure. yeah yeah. Right? yeah definitely as i was uh talking about this with my partner uh recently how like basically for my for a majority of my like adult life I've been and especially the past uh nine eight years or so I've basically been on the road at the very mm -hmm. least like half of the year you know um if not yeah. usually more like eight to ten months and like there must be something about my brain just like getting used to like that shot of adrenaline like <laughs> every night you know and then yeah. like suddenly being in a in a situation where um you know I'm working from home and that's that has its uh there's things about that that I love as well and it's totally different but it's just like a it's an adjustment yeah for sure yeah yeah I I uh I definitely feel the same way like I think it's also you know I'm I'm currently in um Switzerland mm -hmm. uh, but even like now, but the feeling is different because like, you know, 
even though I'm like, I'm, I'm sort of here and I'm mostly like in this environment, but not being able to move around. Like even I think moving around is gonna feel really different if we ever get a chance to do that because it's it's just more restrictive now and it doesn't totally. feel like I, I relate to what you said about, you know, like being in all these different places for many years and it was it's a it's a different rhythm to life, yeah, right? Yeah, I'm grateful I got to do it uh, before yeah. before this all went down and um yeah. Uh so I just wanted to I know like I it's funny I like sent you all these questions I was going to ask and we've kind of like gone off script which is great um but let's just I just want to circle back a little bit um and I want to talk about uh Doug and um how sort of which stands for drawing operations unit uh generation Gener one two three four and um and like we've sort of mentioned you know when you kind of first um from that moment in that on that black box like you've sort of been sort of exploring different ways to uh, engage with this type of technology. Um, and I think you've, there's like five generations of Doug now or something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah, I was just uh, curious to hear also about like more, like I, I have a pretty clear understanding of what like gen one and two were doing um, and I don't know, I'm curious about like what has developed since then um, and like maybe like what what some of the applications have been. Yeah, definitely. So generation three was actually a pretty big departure. Um, I designed a multi-robotic system with my collaborator, Andy Cavatorta, to, uh, which is essentially like 20 different floor-based painting robots wow. that were connected to um, the urban floor of New York City. Um, that I used in um, this like sort of a very, very, I thought very high production, but um, a painting collaboration where uh, they're linked to different interpretations of urban flow taken from public cameras in New York. And uh, we paint on this like 13 foot by 13 foot canvas. Um, and it's a really different dynamic because it involves uh, me sort of adjusting to the position of multiple units and also thinking about ways to harmonize my uh, gestural paint mm. work. So that was sort of the first time I broke into a different format for the robotic arm um, and started exploring this different form of uh, kinetic sculpture, essentially. Um, so I was really interested in that because I wanted to break away from this idea of like single human agent and mechanical agent in like the performance that I wanted to think about more like spatial interaction and like what that would feel like and how that is very much like, you know, I see parallels in how um, like uh, we've seen footage of like Amazon factories and like things like Uber and like automated um, mm -hmm. kind of units in, in society and in our lives and how that organizes um, you know, a, a lot of uh, how we move and how our objects move in space. Mm. I wanted to think about what that design feels like and how that would work in a performance. So that was Generation 3, which we did in 2018. Mm. Um, uh, that was interesting. I was, again, like, um, first time, like, performing with so many different units. It was super chaotic. Mm -hmm. um, it gave me a different impression of what um, it would be like to perform with uh, a broader automated system. Mm. Um, and it was very chaotic at, at times, but I think I'm, I'm still hoping to expand on that. And, you know, I'm looking for ways to uh, fund different developments of that robotic form. Um, but yeah, I've, that was generation three and then generation four um, has sort of been a, a hybrid project. I've been working on um, using my uh, EEG, recorded brainwaves, as, uh, as an input for the robotic unit um, in the painting um, process. And we're still in development with what that interaction actually is. But I'm interested in thinking about not only like gesture, but what biofeedback um, can do in the space of uh, this sort of very, what I feel like is a very physical um, performance now. There's all these like other layers that are, are worth 
thinking about, just to bring a little bit of what's unexpected um, back into the, the project for me. I think I was interested in um, uh, reading my own brainwaves, essentially, and trying to achieve um, the alpha state, uh, which is more associated with like deep meditation. I've been getting a lot more into meditation. And just thinking about those like non-conscious uh, mm. well, inputs yeah. uh, made me want to bring that into this creative process a little bit. So that's been in development a that's lot really cool. over too. So um, and bringing in the audience with that um, by connecting that same um, EEG uh, data to visualizations. So we can sort of not only visualize or not only see what's called like some abstraction of what's um, happening <laughs> uh, uh, through the robotic articulation, but also through um, the visual environment. And then that in turn is something that I'm sort of implicated by too. That was in the most recent performance. Um, That's incredible. It, 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 it gets, it, it's, it's fun. It's, it's a little complicated sometimes. <laughs> I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure. Because, yeah, that's so interesting, like, sort of, you know, I feel like biofeedback and brainwaves, it's, like, one of those things that's, like, invisible but always happening. And, I don't know, just kind of engaging on that in that way, like, feels like a very human thing to do but also foreign, even though it's something that's, like, always kind of happening, you know? Yeah, um, definitely. Yeah. You know, I think I've, I've, I've seen that a lot in, you know, to talk a little bit about performance too, like performers get into that flow state, right? Um, and it's something that I always found really vital about that medium. And, you know, if we convert that flow state to, you know, a data stream, you know, one's biometrics, then that can kind of be like abstracted and quantified in interesting ways. And, and yeah, I don't. I don't know really how that works virtually yet, but we'll, we'll get there. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Um, sorry, one second. I'm gonna just make sure that this is still recording. Cause yeah, I'm gonna do this. Okay. Yeah. The audio. I don't know what happens when my computer goes to sleep. <laughs> Are you still doing your thing? Yes, it's still recording. Cool. Oh, no, 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 I meant um, my audio, like, because I'm recording the audio for my mic into a different uh, computer, so, and that went to sleep, and I... Oh, no, <laughs> you're good. <laughs> Bye. Um, so, oh, yeah, just let me know when you're... Yeah, good. Cool. Um, and I think as a follow-up to that, I'd just be curious, you know, and what, however whatever terms you wanted to answer this question, but like, um, you know, through all of these uh, different explorations uh, with collaborating with AI and applying it in different ways and in different like environments and stuff like that, um, what are some of the things that you feel like you've learned um, either about yourself or about how we uh, interact with systems or um, the environment? Um, through, through like this kind of exploration? Like what, have there been like some like epiphanies or, or like uh, things that you feel like you've taken away from it so far? Yeah, I, I mean, I think it, it, I feel like we've traced a lot of that in, in this conversation. I think a lot of times what one could make the argument that a lot of, well, how a lot of people feel about engaging with um, like, their like social platforms or whatnot is very much about this feeling of control and like programming like you know i i just checked out like 15 minutes of the social dilemma oh yeah uh, i haven't watched it yet yeah i mean it's it's fine uh but it's very it's like very like 2016 for me in terms of like thinking about how the algorithm is controlling and all and all this stuff yeah yeah, yeah. Um, but I think I would, I would say that through the work, like it's been about exploring ways of engaging with technology that aren't about control mm -hmm. um, and not about trying to make things perfect, but just trying to explore this sort of curiosity and sort of understand what 
how we feel when we engage with, um, you know, certain forms of technology like, um, like social media platforms or our phones or whatever, but then also recognizing that, um, you know, it, it's sort of, we're, we're able to explore systems and um, it, in particular AI systems and robotic units in my, in my uh, like sort of genre of work, but we're able to explore that to um, learn something more about something that we love for me is drawing, which is why I've been doing this drawing for almost six years and we'll probably continue to do it for a really long time. Mm -hmm. That's like a way of thinking about getting more insight into a traditional medium that I feel quite strongly about, um, but also like realizing that, especially through this project, like how we define things like machine or system or even like human in a way, or like artist or performer mm -hmm. is very much in flux. Mm -hmm. And um, and I think I've been able to really chart that out in a really earnest way. Uh, that's just like me trying to figure out something for myself. Um, and I feel really empowered by that. And I feel like really creatively inspired by that. Um, and that's not something I thought I was going to feel when I first started out on the black box, right? But, but you know, I, I think I've gotten really deep into like theory and like philosophy in addition to like engineering and just the art form itself because mm -hmm. um, it's made me see a lot more of what things like a machine or a robot or, you know, a ecology, like what that actually could be mm -hmm. and how we can define that for ourselves as artists and as, you know, everybody really. Um, and I think that's really kind of important right now because like, seeing stuff like the social dilemma, just, it's not, it's like very, it's very paranoid and, and it's not wrong, but it's just also not all the way. Um, yeah. And I want to continue to explore what's mm. possible. Yeah, whilst, hopefully, yeah. Sorry. Um, hopefully people like, I haven't seen it yet, but like judging by what you just said, like I have a relatively good idea of what it's about. Hopefully people's takeaway will be more about sort of trying to find ways to break their habits and think of yeah. it in a different way and to have fun with it in a different way. Um, technology and how that relates to um, the things that people are individually passionate about. Um, yeah, right absolutely. You've been able to do. And uh, I think that's, that's, it's actually cool to hear you talk about how you've, gotten really into like philosophy and and like you know asking questions like what it means to be an artist and like how that's in in flux because I think sometimes with technology the thing that um and I catch myself in this cycle too like you know it's really easy to get bogged down with like um you know because there's like sort of like the the um the conceptual ideas and like that in which you're you're kind of exploring these technologies, but then there's also just like the, the very, like, like the grunt work of it, you know, where like every, like, just like kind of like figuring out like how to make this do a certain thing or I don't know, I, you know, what I'm talking about though. It's like, just to get like any kind of result, like there's so many like knobs that you have to like twist and turn and just like, it's, yeah, sometimes it's, bugs are just bugs and not features. Yeah. Totally, totally. Yeah. And sometimes like, you know, you might have an idea that like feels like a beautiful thing to explore, but then it just like doesn't work because of this or that with technology. And sometimes using different technologies that like aren't designed to work together, like presents like all kinds of crazy issues, but yeah. it's, it's, it's easy to get bogged down in that um, and lose sight of sort of like the bigger questions and that's something that's kind of inspiring to me to sort of i might i'll, I'll probably be hitting you up for like a reading list because now that i'm <laughs> in quarantine like that's something that uh, I yeah, we'll start a yeah that sounds great um, but yeah um that's uh, i feel like you have a real knack for kind of uh um you know figuring out like what the kind of zooming out and like um figuring out what it is that is like being clear about what it is that like is getting you excited and, in and inspiring and then kind of like pursuing that through your lens in a really authentic way and i think that's really cool so yeah thanks thanks that that means a lot um i uh 
yeah, that's I, I'm I'm trying to trying to do it. I think we're we're all like trying to you know see what happens to the practice and but I mean that means a lot. I, I appreciate that. Totally, yeah. Um, so I guess the last I think the last like written question I have here that we like maybe haven't completely covered um, is uh, basically like throughout the years like you've created art using many and we didn't even talk about this but like you've done you've created art like using different types of technologies such as like VR and like things like that um, and different processes and you've you've basically experimented in a lot of different ways but you always manage to kind of bring your own distinct style that comes through in the work um, do you feel like this is something that you consciously developed like your aesthetics in a way or was it very much like just a natural thing like you have like sort of like even back to like the artwork you were doing like for percussion lab to now it's like there's like totally a through line and I think that's that's really cool um because it you know you have like a perspective when it comes to aesthetics and I, I just wanted to hear you talk about that a little bit um yeah yeah, that, that's a great question, actually, and, and I, I find the percussion lab throwback. It's making me all nostalgic because not that many people know about that, and that was a really special. Time. So, um, yeah, I think it, it's been a lot about. I've thought about it like it's very much about pursuing something instinctive, you know. And I think there's a reason to why everything for me is related, at least at this point, back to drawing in some way, because that feels like that feels like the North Star in a way. Like I know, I know what resonates with me in drawing in process, but also like as the artifact, you know? Um, and that feels like, yeah, like not a control because it's not like a science experiment, but you know, it feels like something that helps me navigate the sometimes disorienting quality of working with new technologies, right? Like VR, I find incredibly disorienting, but like, <laughs> You know what I mean? And there's just so, like, you can do any, like, anything. You can do so much yeah, yeah. with these tools that you sort of get, like, but I don't think people ever really, not, I, I wonder sometimes if people ask why. Like, yeah, you can, but should you? Right, yeah. <laughs> you know? and, and I think for me, you know, I, I know what I'm, what feels like a true artistic exploration for what I want to do and how I want to develop and, and that's just very much been that drawn organic line. And, mm. and I mean, I do other experiments that don't really see the light of day, um, but like, you know, so I'm not, you know, it, it's just, I think that return to what I love about the process without thinking so much about the outcome mm -hmm. is that through line, mm. um, you know, because yeah. then it's, like, it's just coming from me, you know, and I'm not, yeah like trying to draw a giraffe, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I thought it's like, or like the, the final thing. So, mm. uh, and that process is really, and I think, I think it keeps things fun for me too, because it's like, otherwise it would be, if I focus too much on the outcome, then I don't, I don't know if I could, you know, mm. I, don't know if I would enjoy it as much. So. Totally. Yeah. I, I like that a lot. Like, you know, people always say it's like, oh, it's all about the process, but it really, it really is. And I think another thing that people always say when it comes to technology is like, oh, you have to like, you know, you have to create, you know, set your own limitations. But I think maybe a better way to put that is like, you need to have a North Star, you know, and like yeah. kind of having that lens. Um, and yeah, so there you have it, folks. It all comes back to a really old technology, which is drawing. And for me, it's drumming, which actually those two things are like, some of the oldest <laughs> yeah for real <laughs> primordial yeah. <laughs> just fall in love with the primordial craft and <laughs> you're, you're halfway <laughs> uh, that's awesome well i think uh i don't want to take up too much of your time so i think that's a good place to kind of wrap up um and uh yeah thank you again so much for for doing this it was really really fun and inspiring for me yeah yeah, it was fun. I, uh, I've i been wanting to sort of reconnect. I, I, I thought we would do that like on the road or in New York at some point, but right, yeah. cool. this will be a good crop for you to then. Totally, yeah. I think pre-COVID, both of us were kind of had like unreasonably 
like busy schedules and it was just one of those things you know like where like if i was hanging out even with like old friends that like i consider to be like some of my best friends i've known for a long time it was like i would have to pencil it in my schedule like months out in advance and like um, i hear you yeah and actually in COVID, i've pretty much not really been like talking to that many people but lately i've started to be like hey let's like have just like a social zoom call you know and it's like and it's funny to it's and it's good to to do this as well to kind of have like a, a space where this kind of thing can happen so i appreciate it yeah. Yeah, thank, you. thank you for inviting me it was fun